Warning, this episode discusses a new, little-known research chemical in the psychedelic class that can potentially be more dangerous and more risky than even classical ordinary psychedelics. So, on top of all of the dangers that exist with ordinary psychedelics like mushrooms, LSD, and DMT, when you're getting into research chemicals, which is what this chemical is, then there can be potentially additional risks and dangers. Do not do research chemicals unless you are mature and you understand exactly what you're doing. This video is for educational purposes only. I'm really excited to finally be sharing with you a new psychedelic substance that I've discovered, which is as powerful, if not more powerful, than 5-MeO-DMT. And that substance is 5-MeO-MALT. 5-MeO-M-A-L-T. So I'll be discussing all the nuances of this substance, how it feels, how it works, how it compares to other psychedelics, and how you can use it to grow yourself massively, how you can awaken yourself and realize God, and all that stuff. We'll get into that in a minute. But before we get into that, a few disclaimers and notes. So first of all, make sure you stick around to the end of the episode, where after I'm done discussing this substance, I will be making a sort of an announcement into a shift in trajectory of actualized drug teachings. So stay for that. And... Uh, of course, the next point is the disclaimer. The disclaimer is that this is a very powerful psychedelic, as powerful as the most powerful psychedelics. It's very easy to overdo and overuse this psychedelic because it's very potent at low doses. And so if you misuse this psychedelic, I'm warning you, you can injure yourself psychologically, physically, you could even kill yourself if you're screwing around and you don't know what you're doing. So. The responsibility is on you if you're going to use this substance to use it very carefully and to follow all the safety protocols and guidelines that I've outlined in the past about how to use psychedelics. And you want to be even more careful because this substance doesn't have a lot of trip reports on it. Not a lot of people have used it, so it's, it's a relatively new substance, and therefore you should be even more cautious about it than your classical psychedelics like mushrooms and LSD and DMD. Now, when I say I've discovered the substance, of course, uh, I didn't invent it. I'm not a chemist or anything. Um, I, when I say I discovered it, I'm not saying I'm the first person who's ever used it. What I'm claiming just is that I've discovered it for myself, is what I mean. <laughs> Every psychedelic, you sort of have to discover for yourself its true power and potential. Some psychedelics are duds, and others turn out to be amazing. So for me, I discovered how amazing this substance is and, and its potential in spiritual growth. That's, that's why I care about it so much. Uh, and so, um, also, it took me by surprise so much because the few trip reports that do exist about it on the internet, they don't, they don't showcase or highlight the power of this substance. And so you might easily overlook this substance if you're just reading the few trip reports that exist. And there's there's honestly very, very few trip reports. So it is something quite new. And, uh, and most psychonauts, even most serious psychonauts, don't know about it, and they're missing out on it. And so I feel like it's my duty to share this information with the world that I've discovered. Um, I, I make no special claims <laughs> over this substance. <laughs> I'm just saying I discovered it for myself. And... I'm talking about it because it's not very popular. Nobody really knows about it. Nobody understands what this can do for mankind or for your own spiritual growth. So that's why we got to talk about it and we got to hype it up a little bit. So here we are. All right. So what is this substance? 5-MeO-MALT. Well, of course, structurally, it's quite similar to 5-MeO-DMT. Although there are other substances that are structurally similar to 5-MeO-DMT, which do not produce the same kind of radical effects that 5-MeO-DMT produces. So what's special about 5-MeO-DMT is that it's not full of a lot of visuals. It doesn't produce a lot of weird hallucinations and twisted visions and things like that that you might get on mushrooms or on LSD. It's just pure non-duality, pure infinity, pure consciousness, pure absolute truth. Pure God realization. That's what's remarkable about 5-MeO-DMT. 
uh, it has very few visuals to it, and it just takes you straight to what spirituality is really about. It's the the heart, the core of spirituality, you might say, and it's it's very radical in how directly it deconstructs your ego mind and takes you straight to universal consciousness. Well, that's 5-MeO DMT. And 5-MeO malt has all those same characteristics, but in a different flavor. In a different flavor. How would I describe this different flavor? It's, it's tricky. You know, the first time I did it, I actually vaped it. And I almost did it sort of by accident. By which I mean, I was... I was vaping a lot of DMT at the time and exploring the DMT space, and that was amazing for me. Um, but then I decided to like compare what it's like to vape DMT to something to something else. So I put a little bit, just a, a tiny, tiny, like a, a few grains of five amino malt into a, a, into a pipe and vaped it. And I was just expecting some threshold effects, you know, something interesting. I, I wasn't I wasn't ready to do some deep trip. And then, of course, it took me by surprise. It was It's so powerful at such low doses um, relative to normal DMT that uh, it, it, it gave me a really powerful sort of God realization, God awakening trip. Uh, it, it hits you like a sledgehammer. Within 30 seconds, within 60 seconds, you're there. And it, it was beautiful. It was amazing. It had a different feel to it. The way I would describe the feel is that it's got this sort of... Um, the visuals on it are mild. It's not like DMT, it's more like 5-MeO DMT. Very mild visuals, at least for me. I don't know how it is for you. But for me, very mild visuals, but it's got more color and more flavor than just 5-MeO DMT. Uh, for me, it's got this magenta tint to it that is very beautiful. It's got these almost like neon-like colors, but they're they're faint and they're, and they're gradual. There's not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of fractal geometry like you would get on NNDMD. Um, but what's most remarkable about it is, to me, how holistic it is and how stable it is in allowing the mind to expand into God consciousness and stay there for a good... Well, if you're vaping it, it'll only last maybe 20 minutes or so, 20, 30 minutes. But if you're plugging it, which I'll be talking about here in a minute, then it, the trip will last 90 minutes to even two hours. So it's slightly longer lasting, I would say, than 5-MeO DMT. And for me, one of the metrics that I use to gauge and compare different psychedelics, I was thinking about what kind of metrics we can use. I sort of developed this axis or this metric of uh, holism and also stability. Some psychedelics, most psychedelics, what they do is they actually allow the mind to, to, to think chains of thoughts that are much more elevated and beyond the typical types of thoughts that you can think in your sober, sort of normie state. The chains can be longer and they can also be deeper and and like at a, at, a, at a higher dimension, and they can be more holistic. So what I mean by longer chains of thinking is that ordinarily if you're, if I ask you to contemplate about something, you can sit there and contemplate and you can maybe run a chain of thought for five seconds or 10 seconds or 20 seconds, and then it'll peter out and it'll veer off into some other direction. In your mind, it's, it's very ADD-like, and it's not able to just focus in like a laser on some contemplation topic for five or ten minutes. And so because of this, you have actually difficulty penetrating with your mind into any kind of existential questions. So this is one of the reasons that you struggle to actually understand some of the advanced things that I talk about is because you actually need a very, very stable mind that can penetrate through into some contemplative question very deeply. And uh, ordinary human physiology, neurophysiology, simply doesn't allow that in most cases. It needs to be trained up. That's the point of meditation and concentration practices. Uh, but anyways, so psychedelics elevate your mind's capacity to do that. And some psychedelics 
can just extend the chains of your thoughts. Other psychedelics will both ex expand the chains, the length of them, and also um, the breadth of them, how much you can integrate at once. Your thoughts become sort of multi-dimensional and multi-threaded and multi-faceted. Think of, it's almost like going from a, a single core CPU to a multi-core hyper-threaded CPU. It sort of feels like that. And, um, and then some psychedelics will twist your thoughts around, like mushrooms and LSD. Your thoughts can get very loopy and twisty, and it can also be actually difficult to stay, like on a mushroom trip, it can be difficult to stay on a single topic for too long because your mind weaves around and then you get lost in all sorts of uh, tangents. And then this could actually veer off into a bad trip. And that, that's not very useful for the kind of work that we're trying to do here. With 5-MeO malt, what's so remarkable about it is how stable it is. You can go into a God realization state and you can stay in that state for 30, 60, 90 minutes and you can just probe into it and you can very deeply introspect about every aspect of yourself as God and how you are constructing reality, dreaming up the entire thing. And so I've had some ridiculously powerful God realizations on 5 Emil Malt. It's, it's hard to say per se that they are more powerful than 5-MeO-DMT. I mean, I've had some crazy God realizations on 5-MeO-DMT too. But what 5-MeO-Malt allows me to do um, is that it, it feels more gentle and it takes me into that space and it allows me to explore that space a little bit, a little bit more practically than I can on 5-MeO-DMT. With 5-MeO-DMT, it sort of just blasts you into infinity. If you take a lot of it, it just kind of blasts you in there. It can be so shocking, it's difficult for the mind to even kind of understand what's going on and integrate it. Whereas with 5 of malt, it's it's a little bit less of a blast, although you can certainly blast yourself with, with any psychedelic, but it's a little bit it's a little bit less like just pure intensity, and it's a little bit more uh, holistic and kind of comprehensive, and it, it allows you to actually deeply introspect and to see in real time how you're constructing all of reality, which we've talked about in the past. Uh, how you're dreaming up your parents, how you're constructing your own birth, how you're dreaming up science, how you're dreaming up logic and mathematics, how you're dreaming up other people, and it's ridiculously profound in that respect. You can, you can go so deep into the actual mechanics of how you're constructing reality that this is what allows you to truly see what's really going on. Even if you've had some God realization or some awakenings on other psychedelics, that doesn't really mean you understand the actual mechanism by which God is dreaming up this dream. You probably still don't understand that. It took me many, many, many trips to understand that. And I had to use various substances to access that from different places. And accessing that is easier on some substances than others. So for me, 5 mule malt is remarkable in its ability to, to allow me to do that. The other benefit that I've noticed from 5-MeO malt is that 5-MeO DMT has a pretty strong body load for most people, including for me. It's rather uncomfortable, especially when you're first coming up on it. It can be rather uncomfortable. It can make you nauseous. I've come to points where I, I, I was almost on the brink of throwing up on 5-MeO DMT, and those first like 15 minutes going into a trip are, are rather uncomfortable. Um, it, your body starts to feel kind of weird. And I've, I've seen other people do 5 mo DMT and their body reacts really badly. Like they're vomiting, their, their body gets all twisted up and it's very uncomfortable. They have weird sort of tensions in their body that they're trying to work through. And that prevents them from actually accessing the deeper metaphysical existential aspects that we really care about, the contemplative work that I care about. And so for me, 5 mule malt has a, it still has a body load, but it's a much more comfortable, more manageable body load. It feels less nauseous. Now, again, I'm only speaking from my own, my own direct experiences here. Remember that this substance is rather new and there's not a lot of reports from other people. So how it affects you 
or the majority of people, I don't know. I can only speak to myself and how it affects me. And I am more sensitive to psychedelics than most people, and psychedelics do affect me differently than they do some people. And also, you have to understand that I've done hundreds of trips already on other, on other substances, and I've done a lot of inner work on myself. So the way that a psychedelic affects me is probably not the way that it would have affected me five years ago, for example. So I'm sort of at an advanced stage, whereas if you're a newbie, it might affect you differently just because you're a newbie and you're going to have to spend years working up to get to the point that I'm talking about. So don't expect that this to, to be like a magic pill that solves all the stuff for you. You have to understand that I've done years of, of inner work both outside of psychedelics, but then also inside of psychedelics, right? And, and that does matter. And having breakthroughs on 5-MeO-DMT, for example, changes the characteristics of all other psychedelics, like mushrooms, LSD, and so forth. And so, of course, I would assume that it also changes the characteristics of 5-MeO-Malt, too. So just keep these complications in mind. Um, this is all a lot more nuanced and tricky than it seems. There's no simple answers here. Uh, but anyways... I really like the fact that it has a lower body load. It's more comfortable. And I think for, for many people, if it works the way it does for me, for you, then you'll enjoy that aspect of it as well. This means that you can focus more on contemplation rather than dealing with all sorts of body discomforts. Now, as far as how can you administer this substance to yourself? Well, I've tried it two ways. I've tried it vaped and I've tried it plugged. So plugged means rectally. That is my favorite way to, to take psychedelics through plugging. And the good news is that it works amazing through plugging, uh, just like 5-MeO-DMT works amazing through plugging. So that's the method that I recommend. You can, of course, vape it. The problem is that it's extremely potent and that you're very likely to overdose or to blast yourself in a way that you're not going to be able to handle the trip and therefore increasing the likelihood of a bad trip. So I recommend that you don't vape. Also, vaping is not good for your lungs. So avoid vaping substances if you have other methods. Plugging is going to be much better. So I recommend you plug it. I have a, actually a video on my blog, an old video that I released, which demonstrates the plugging technique. So if you want, you can Google for that and find it on my blog. Uh, and so basically, you can, you can plug it or vape it very much the same as 5-MeO-DMT. The dosages are roughly the same. So if you're going to be vaping it, I would recommend starting with a dosage that's very low, like 5 milligrams. And then gradually working your way up. Even 10 milligrams is going to be a very powerful dose. And then 15 will probably be <laughs> stratospheric. And then uh, as far as plugging goes, I would recommend starting with a 10 milligram dose. That's going to be a solid trip. For me, 10 milligrams is a solid breakthrough trip. And then you can increase it to 15, 20. The most I've done, I would say, is, is maybe 22 milligrams or so. That's a crazy deep trip. Now, of course, like I said, I'm more sensitive to psychedelics than most people. I would say I'm twice to three times more sensitive, which means that if for me, 10 milligrams is a solid trip, for the average person, I would expect that 10 milligrams is just going to be maybe a threshold dose, plugged. And therefore, you might need to go up to 20 or 30 milligrams just to get a, a solid trip. And then if you want a really powerful trip, you might need to go to 40 or 50. I don't know. You, that's something you're going to have to test and figure out for yourself. Of course, it's always better to start low than it is to start high. Because uh, especially with something this powerful, you want to make sure you go very, very gradually and you don't assume anything, start at 5 milligrams, start at 10 milligrams, don't start any higher, and just see how your body handles it. <clears throat> see if you have any allergic reactions, see um, if it produces any kind of weird sensations in you, see if it feels healthy to you or it feels toxic to you, and then proceed based upon that feedback. Now, the beautiful thing about 5-MeO-Malt is that it has no tolerance, just like 5-MeO-DMT. So you can basically dose, dose it as much as you want. Although, of course, that presents a, a serious potential for abuse if you dose it too much. I recommend you don't do this substance more than once a week. 
Um, and I, I don't recommend you do it multiple times a day uh, or multiple days in a row for long periods of time because this will turn into an addiction. It'll turn into a crutch and you will start to unravel your mind and your reality and you will you will potentially develop mental disorders and you'll just lose grounding in your own life. And you might start to act out in unhealthy ways with your relationships, with your career, with your job, with your money and things like this. And you might get yourself into trouble. So be very careful about that. But if you want, you can dose it as much as you want, basically, and you're not going to have tolerance to it. So that's nice. That means that if you need to, for whatever work you're doing, and you need to go back in for a second trip, or you feel like your first trip wasn't enough, you got to go a little higher, um, you can do that. You can do that quickly, um, which is really nice. This is definitely not a recreational psychedelic. This is not something you do at a party around a bunch of people in a loud setting. This is something you have to do with a serious spiritual intent because you're going to be coming face to face with God here. <laughs> um, this will take you to infinity. This will take you to God realization. This will show you that everything is an infinite hallucination. Absolute hallucination. Absolutely everything. You will discover that everything you thought was real is unreal. Science, math, logic, reason, language, society, humanity, the earth, history, even Leo. You'll even realize that Leo is something you're imagining. Everything is imagination, infinite imagination. Now, of course, there's a, a powerful love component here as well. Absolute love, infinite love. If you want to discover the love of God, this is how you do it. At least that's how it affects me. Again, I don't really know how it'll affect you. For example, for me, NNDMT affects me very differently than it does most people. I don't get a lot of colorful visuals and crazy fractals and aliens and DMT aliens and dwarves and things like this on NNDMT. It also takes me just to infinity. Uh, it's got a little more color to it than 5-MeO, but still. Uh, it affects me pretty differently. So I don't know how 5-MeO Malt will affect you. That's something you have to test out and research. And we just don't have the data on that. We don't have good scientific data as to like, well, is it going to affect the majority of people the way that it affects me? Maybe. Or maybe only a minority. Maybe for the majority of people, it'll be a dud. I don't know. That's something you'll have to test. We're on the cutting edge here of scientific research. This is a research chemical. And so the only way we're going to know is by, by doing this research. This is how it's done. This is how all sci cutting edge science is done. Somebody has to do it. And there's risks associated with that. So understand that. About the legality of this substance, you're wondering, Leo, is this substance legal in my country? Well, I have an audience all around the world, so literally people from every country in the world watch these videos. I don't know what country you're from. You have to check the laws and check, check the situation there, what the opportunities and the, the potential risks are. I'm not giving you any kind of legal advice. In fact, I would say be very cautious about the legalities of these kinds of substances. Do your research, understand what the penalties are for breaking the rules, um, and see, see what's possible. Um, this substance is not known to, to most people. Uh, but on the other hand, countries do have various kinds of analog laws, and some countries ban the entire class of psychedelics, and that might fall, um, th this, 5 malt might fall into that category. So do that research for yourself. Um, this is not legal advice. This is just general information about this substance. And then what you do with it, that's that's on you. Take responsibility for that. Make sure you you consider the dangers and the risks. And the, the risks are not just mental and physical. There are legal risks and other things like this that you need to take into consideration. 
uh, but also consider the possibility that you can find countries where this is not illegal and where you can do this legally. So consider traveling to one of those countries if you want to do it legally, right? People oftentimes make excuses like, oh, Leo, but psychedelics are illegal. And I don't want to do anything illegal. Well, psychedelics, there are many different kinds of psychedelics and not all of them are illegal in every place. So sometimes it's just as simple as taking a, a car ride or a train ride or a plane ride to a place where it's legal. And you might say, oh, Leo, but that, that's too much hassle. It's less hassle than spending 10 years in meditation, struggling and struggling and still never realizing that you're God. So don't be, don't be afraid to, to travel to a place where these things are legal and then do it legally. What else is there to say about 5 ABO malt? I mean, there's not much to say. <laughs> I recommend you try it. <laughs> what can I say? It's, it's ridiculously powerful. It's amazing. I've had very deep mystical experiences on it that allowed me to introspect into the very mechanics of how my mind constructs all of reality. It's very, very shocking. Very radical. Uh, beware. It's very solipsistic. If you're scared of solipsism, <laughs> the substance is not for you. <laughs> if you want to maintain the illusion of other people, this substance is not for you. If you want to maintain various illusions about your gurus and, and your notions of enlightenment, this substance is not for you. It'll blast away all your ideas of enlightenment, awakening, all the stuff that gurus have taught you. All that stuff uh, is nonsense compared to what this substance will show you. Now you might say, Leo, but... It sounds rather similar to 5-MeO DMT, so is there any point in me trying 5-MeO malt if I can just do 5-MeO DMT? To which the answer is, you won't really know until you try it. For me, there was enormous value in trying it, even after I've tried 5-MeO DMT many times. Now, if you can't access 5-MeO malt, because it's not available in your area or whatever, and all you can access is 5-MeO DMT, I mean, <laughs> don't be bummed out. That's still an amazing substance. You're not missing very much. Um, and even if you can't access 5-MeO DMT and you can just access LSD or mushrooms or regular DMT, I mean, th those are still amazing substances and you can use them to access similar places. I I'm not saying that 5-MeO malt will allow you to access things that you could never access any other way, you can certainly access the same basic insights and states of consciousness through other substances and even perhaps through yoga or meditation if you do it very seriously. But um, for me, I found enormous value in exploring different substances and comparing them to each other. And uh, it's like having different tools in your toolbox. You could use a flathead screwdriver to to unscrew most screws, but it's nice to have a variety of different screwdrivers for all the different possible screws there are. There's a nicer fit there and you get to, you just get more efficiency that way. Um, so don't, don't feel upset that you can't access 5 ml malt. I mean, see what's, see what's possible, see what's available, but if you can't, that's fine. There's many other psychedelics you could access that will also produce incredible trips, mystical experiences, results, breakthroughs, God realizations, and so forth. Um, don't fall into this trap of thinking that there's one ultimate psychedelic. It doesn't work that way. It's like different flavors of ice cream. There's no one ultimate flavor of ice cream. There's different ones. Taste the whole rainbow. <laughs> Explore the field. See what's possible. See how it affects you. What you'll discover is that psychedelics probably affect you in a unique way that's different than me and other people around you, your friends. And so you're really not going to know what you're missing until you just go and explore and try stuff out. Now, of course, exploration can be dangerous and risky. And so you need to be cognizant and you got to be cognizant of those risks and decide for yourself whether you're willing to take those risks. Life is all about taking strategic risks. Now, some people say, well, but Leo, you keep having these awakenings and you say 
that it's deeper and deeper and deeper. How can they all be deeper? And then how do you know that your latest one is the deepest? And how do you know that your latest one is the is is the truest one? Again, uh, the trips don't contradict themselves. It's all about a convergence. It's about a deepening in the same basic truth. The basic truth we're talking about here is oneness, God, love, infinity, consciousness, non-duality. That's the basic truth. None of that changes. You can just explore that truth from different angles and perspectives and different flavors, and you can grasp it at different levels of holism, and then you can integrate it deeper and deeper into your own life, and you can see how this truth plays out across your life in ever deeper and more comprehensive ways. That's what we're talking about here. So it's not that 5 amyl malt contradicts 5 amyl DMT, and then I have to sit here now and decide which one to trust. No, <laughs> they're both pointing to the same truth. The same basic truth is being talked about. Let's see. Is there anything else that I want to say about 5 amyl malt before I move on to some points about actualized? Um, I mean, you just got to basically try to see how amazing it is. It is basically like magic. It works like magic. It's like a fucking miracle. It's a miracle that this substance exists and that substances like it exist and that such things are possible. It's a miracle. You're not going to believe what this will do to your consciousness. This will take you to levels of consciousness that you will never, ever, ever reach through meditation or yoga unless perhaps you're going to devote your entire life to living in a cave and meditating for 20 years. You're never going to reach these levels of consciousness. And even if you do meditate in a cave for 20 years, there's no guarantee you will reach this depth of consciousness. With this substance, you can understand everything that I teach, all of my most advanced teachings. You can understand. All of it will make perfect sense. You can understand where reality came from, why it exists, who created it, what is God, what is love, what is truth, what is consciousness, what is existence, where, um, where it all came from, why it's here, what the purpose of life is, what the ego is, what the self is, what all the gurus and teachers are talking about, what non-duality is. This is the highest truth. And it's so crystal clear. But you're probably going to have to work with it for a while to get to that crystal clarity. Don't expect to get to that crystal clarity with a couple of trips. Because you're going to have a lot of baggage. Psychological baggage and false beliefs. You're going to have to bust through and deconstruct all of materialism, all of science, all of your attachments and ideas, even your ideas about enlightenment and awakening and stuff you've heard from Eckhart Tolle and from other teachers, you're going to have to even deconstruct all of that to get to the ultimate crystal clear understanding of what you are and what God is. Uh, I should make a note here about uh, any bad trips that I've had. I've never had a bad trip on 5 Emil Malt. I've taken it, I would say, maybe 10 times, which is not that much. But in those 10 times, I've never had a bad trip. Now, of course, understand that this, that doesn't mean that you won't have a bad trip. I would say that the majority of people, if you give a normie 5 Emil Malt and you just blast him with it, he's going to have a bad trip because he's not prepared. He doesn't have the foundation laid down for understanding the radical insights that will come to him. So, but if you work your way gradually up and then you do the work that I talk about and teach through actualize.org, then for me, it, it's a very benevolent, positive substance. Uh, I don't feel that my mind goes out of control on this substance. I don't experience any kind of dangerous loss of bodily coordination on this substance. Although, of course, that could happen if you take too much of it. And, and in general, it feels quite safe in that it doesn't distort the visual field very much. So you're still very much in control of your body. You can still see and function. Although 
you can have such deep states of infinite consciousness that you won't really be able to walk around very much. But uh, that's that. You also have to be careful about the purity of the substance. One of the ways in which I judge the purity of a substance is by its color. The closer to white that it is, or a little bit off-white, then I trust the substance more. You can find very pure formulations of 5-MeO-DMT. Now, with 5-MeO-Malt, the substances that I've seen of it are a, quite a, a dark brown color, which does make me a little bit suspicious. You know, what, what is that dark brown? Is that is that the natural color of that chemical? It could be, or it could be impurities. And if it's impurities, that's not, that's not a good thing. Um, and so it still works. <laughs> I've used a, a, quite a dark brown. It almost looks like brown sugar. That's the kind of consistency of 5 meal malt that I've used. I believe the version that I use is an HCl salt version. You could probably find it in a freebase version. Now, you can plug the freebase just as easily as you can plug the salt version. It's not going to make a difference other than that freebase is actually going to be a little bit more potent. Freebase, you should expect it to be 10 to 20% more potent than salt version. And it'll dissolve. It'll be more difficult to dissolve. You'll have to use a little bit more vinegar to dissolve it. Um, but you can still plug that, and you can also vape the salt version. So, I vape the salt version, the HCl, and it vapes fine. Although, not it doesn't vape as cleanly as as the freebase would. So, depending on what you want to do, find the right version for you. And. Um, be careful about impurities. So if the substance is darker color, then my rule of thumb is that if, if a chemical is darker in color, it's not as white, then how would you dose it extra low and just make sure that your body is not having any kind of allergic reactions to the impurities and that your body feels good and comfortable and nothing nothing's being damaged. And you, you can feel that if something is, is being damaged there in most cases. And then you can ramp up higher. Anything else about 5 Um I am really excited to get feedback from you guys. If some of you are going to try it, uh, come post your trip reports. We're going to start a, a mega thread for 5 Malt trip reports on actualize.org, the forum. Uh, come to the forum, post your trip reports. I'm interested in gathering data about your experiences. I want to know how profound they were or how much of a dud they were, any bad trips you've had, uh, how it compares to other psychedelics you've taken. This is this is basically the beginnings of scientific research that's being done on this substance. And in the future, some scientists might actually look at that mega thread and use some of those uh, stories and trip reports to base their research upon in the future. And in the future, the potential of this substance is to transform mankind, <laughs> awaken mankind. Maybe this substance can be used for healing the way that MDMA is used, for example, for healing PTSD or for uh, helping people in, in, in depression, healing depression, anxiety, other things like that. I definitely see huge therapeutic potential for this substance. The love, the profound love that you experience on this substance can have powerful therapeutic effects and the, uh, the, the capacity to, to introspect into your own psyche and to, to observe your own ego from sort of an outside perspective. All of this can be very powerful for dissolving dysfunctional psychological tendencies that you might have. But the research on that, of course, is still decades away. All right, so that's that. Uh, if you're going to try this substance, again, be very careful and understand the risks that you're taking on when you do that. For me personally, I have not felt that this substance is toxic or damaging to my body. Uh, it feels rather pleasant. And um, for me, I don't feel like it's it's that dangerous. 
there are other psychedelics that I've tried that, that feel way more dangerous and toxic than 5 amyl malt. But then again, I'm very careful and responsible about how to use these substances. And I'm me, I'm not you, so I can't tell you how this is going to affect you. That's something you'd have, you're going to have to figure out for yourself. Nobody can tell you. All right, so that's 5 amyl malt. Now, as far as the announcement about actualize.org going forward, so it's become clear to me that I'm really dissatisfied with the way that mainstream teachers talk about non-duality, God, love, awakening, enlightenment, all of these things. I'm really dissatisfied. The more the more I understand what God is, the more dissatisfied I become with the way that mainstream teachers teach these things. The more dissatisfied I become with, with methods like meditation, yoga, and so forth. And while I'm not saying that there's no value there at all, there's still value there. And I'm not saying you should stop doing your yoga or your meditation. But going forward, what I'm going to be leaning on is psychedelic awakening. I've done a lot of introspection, and what I've come to is that for me, the things that I like to teach, the very deep existential insights into the nature of self, other, love, God, truth, consciousness, existence, science, and all these sorts of things, to really understand what I'm talking about, the bottom line is that you have to use psychedelics. And if you're not using psychedelics, you're simply wasting time. That's just the truth of it. You're wasting a lot of time. I spend so much time on the forum and in the comments sections, and even when I do interviews or podcasts with other folk, trying to explain my worldview, trying to explain how, how God works, how awakening works, how love works, we spend so much time discussing in circles all of these, these topics. And people just repeatedly ask, like, Leo, is solipsism true? Tell me. Or, Leo, what about, how can everything be love? Tell me, explain it to me. Or, Leo, what about God? You know, does God work this way or that way? Leo, what about the afterlife? Is there, is there an afterlife or not? What about death? Leo, what is death? Explain that to me. And I've explained all these things in prior episodes. The problem is, is that I can explain these things to you for hours and hours and hours, for years. And you still won't have a fucking clue what I'm talking about. That's the problem. And I really don't like that. <laughs> so going forward, I'm going to be leaning more on psychedelics as a teaching tool. To me, it's a teaching tool. This is the most direct way that I've discovered, and I've tried different ways, all sorts of different ways, to access these insights and to understand what reality is. And what I've discovered through my own experience is that psychedelics are the most powerful way to do that. They are not the only way. You don't have to do them if you don't want to. I'm not forcing you to do them. But they are the most direct way that I know that exists. That's just the bottom line of it. You can quibble about how, oh, Leo, but but it's it's a shortcut or it's not it's not genuine. Because, you know, if you were genuine about it, you would just meditate all day and like this sort of stuff. You can make these sorts of arguments, but the, but the bottom line is that these, these arguments simply aren't factually correct. They're not factually correct. The majority of mankind is not going to be able to understand the things that I teach without psychedelics. That's just a fact. There are some exceptionally gifted, spiritually talented people who do exist. But these people, they don't really need my help explaining very much because these people are already talented in what they're doing, in their meditation and spiritual practices. They could even have spontaneous awakenings and so forth. And for them, it's easy. This work is very easy. But, but that, that's a, I would say that's 1% of the population. The other 99% are not going to understand. And in fact, it's a deep disservice to those other 99% when those 1% pretend as though the other 99% are going to access the deepest understandings through some simple meditation practice or some simple self-inquiry practice. It's simply not going to happen. 
And so if you've been following that idea that, oh, I just me- I'm just i just going to meditate for 30 or 60 minutes a day. I'm going to do a little self-inquiry here and there, and I'm going to I'm going to reach God. I'm here to tell you that you're fooling yourself. You're not going to reach God that way. Chances are you're not. It's more true to say that you're not than it is to say that you are. Those people who say, oh, well, Leo, sure they can. Sure they can. Less than 1% can. The other 99% can't, which means that it's actually more true to say that they can't than that they can. If 1% can, that's almost as though nobody can. The problem is that you're in denial about it. And your teachers and your gurus are not being honest with you. They are misleading you. So what I'm concerned about is I don't want you, the average spiritual seeker, to waste 10 or 20 years of your life pursuing God and 10, 20 years from now, you still don't have a a clue what God is. To me, this is a ridiculous failure on behalf of teachers. Why waste all of that time, all of that mental energy? Why rack your mind trying to understand these things when you can take a psychedelic like 5-amyl malt and within 15 to 30 minutes, you will understand directly. You don't need a book. You don't need a guru. You don't need a teacher. You don't even need Leo. You don't even need actualize.org. All you need is the psychedelic and careful protocols and a genuine desire to understand and a very open mind. Now, if you don't have the desire, you don't have an open mind, then it's not going to work. If you abuse it, it's not going to work. But if you use it responsibly, carefully, deliberately with the right intentions, it's going to work and you're going to have profound epiphanies that you yourself will understand you couldn't have had any other way. This will save you years and decades in your spiritual work. Now, of course, whenever I say this, people misunderstand and they think that I'm saying that this is the only way you should use, the only method, the only tool. I'm not saying that. I still recommend you maintain a meditation practice, a yoga practice. If you want to do self-inquiry, do that. If you want to build up your concentration skills and access various various uh, jnanas and, and this, this kind of stuff, by all means, practice and do all that. But you're not going to use those to get the deepest understanding of God. You're, you're just not. It's not going to work. And in fact, you're going to fool yourself. Very, very likely you're going to fool and deceive yourself in following the, those other paths. Because uh, the bottom line is that the thing that is preventing you from understanding reality at the deepest levels is simply the inadequate state of consciousness that you're occupying right now. The baseline normie state of human consciousness is simply insufficient to understand how all of reality is constructed using God's mind. You can't understand that from that state of consciousness and meditation is not going to be sufficient enough to boost your consciousness high enough to understand that. Now you can use it to boost yourself a bit and that's great, but you're not going to get the deepest understanding. You're not going to get the holistic under the, 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 the most holistic understanding. You're not going to be able to really integrate every piece and every facet of everything to get, to get the, the full realization of what God and what love and what existence is. And to me, that's the greatest shame. And so, going forward, I'm going to lean on psychedelics as a tool more. And I don't mean for myself, because I don't really even need psychedelics anymore. I figured it out. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't really need them anymore. I mean, for you. For those of you who still haven't figured it out and have a long ways to go, for you, psychedelics are, are just the most powerful tool. And I have to be honest in telling you that. I can't sit up here and lie to you that you'll get there through meditation when you probably won't.
And now you might say, well, Leo, but I don't want to do anything illegal. I don't want to get myself into trouble. Okay, fine. But there are ways to do psychedelics that are not illegal. You can travel to different countries, different cities. You can find psychedelics that are, even in your area, that are not illegal. It's going to take more work. It's going to cost you something. But you know what? Meditating for 10 years, that's a lot of work too. That also costs you something. Going to retreats, that costs you something. Buying book after book after book, that costs you something. Everything has a cost. An energy cost, a money cost, a time cost. At the very least, you could travel to South America and do an ayahuasca ceremony. You might say, oh, Leo, but that's such, such a pain in the ass. It, it's going to cost me $1,000 for the plane ticket, and then maybe another $1,000 for the retreat. That's $2,000. And then I'm going to have to take a week off of work. That's a week lost right there. And then it's a, it's a pain in the ass to fly over there. Is that even worth it? It is. If you have a breakthrough into God realization. For $2,000, that's a bargain. That's a bargain. And that's not the only way to do it. You could find various kinds of retreats and other psychedelics that are available closer to you where you don't even need to travel that far. You just have to explore the possibilities, do your research. So, most people have more options than they understand. If you're serious about this work and you don't take psychedelics seriously, then you're not serious about this work. And be careful dabbling in psychedelics, thinking that just by doing a couple of trips, now you understand how it all works. And that you, you've gotten the message and now it's time to hang up the phone. No, you haven't gotten the message. You really haven't gotten the message. You haven't understood how deep the rabbit hole goes. So keep exploring and going deeper and deeper. So, uh, so anyways, now you understand my position. Um, I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for this. People are going to criticize me like, oh, Leo, um, you're just stuck on psychedelics and blah, blah, blah. I've, I've heard this a million times, so I don't, I don't give a fuck about that anymore. Um, you're not going to dissuade me from, from my position. So if you don't like this approach, if you don't like the idea of psychedelic awakening, if you think awakening is something different than psychedelics, if you think awakening isn't possible through psychedelics, if you think that awakening, um, that the real awakening is the meditative one, and then the psychedelic awakening is the fake awakening. If these are your positions, then I don't, I don't even want to talk to you. I don't, I don't care, right? Like, you don't understand what you're talking about. That's just the bottom line. And if that's your position, then just unfollow me. Stop watching me. I don't, I don't care. Do your own thing. Do it your way. I'm not telling you how to do your spirituality, but I will teach spirituality in a certain specific way. And I do have biases in, in how I teach these things. And so if you don't resonate with my style, and if my biases upset you and you think that it's it's dangerous or wrong or bad, uh, just go do it your way. I don't care how you do it, right? But I do have to teach in a way that is in alignment with the deepest things that I've realized and that I know and in the ways that I feel are going to be most helpful to the majority of people out there. And so what I've concluded is that this is the way. This is the way. Uh, we're actually not going to awaken the majority of mankind through any kind of meditative retreats or self-inquiry. It's not going to work. If that would have worked, it would have already happened hundreds of years ago. So it's not going to happen. That's a dead end. Uh, but we can awaken a lot more of mankind through, through the responsible exploration of these incredible substances, and then the discovery of even more powerful and more amazing substances in the future. Because the whole field of psychedelics is still in its infancy, and the kind of 
chemicals that will be discovered 50 years from now, 100 years from now, and their potential to transform mankind, to heal mankind spiritually, psychologically, physically, from addictions and from anxiety and PTSD and from their egoic delusions, that potential is enormous, but it comes with risks. It's not foolproof. Just like no spiritual technique or path is foolproof. So make sure that if you're going to do this, you do it carefully. And if you're going to do this, do not give psychedelics and do not give 5-MeO malt a bad name. That's the most disrespectful thing you can do with my work and the deepest things that I share with you. You see, I could be charging thousands of dollars to share these insights with you. I don't. I release them for free. I could put up paywalls. I don't, for the most part. I put out some of my best, deepest stuff for free because I wanted to percolate through the culture. To me, that's more important than putting it behind a paywall. Because for me, this is about a larger impact, having a larger impact on mankind that cannot be had behind a paywall, even though I would personally benefit from putting it behind a paywall. So since I'm going out of my way to share these profound insights with you and these methods and techniques that I'm discovering, what I expect from you in return as payment is respect for the insights and the techniques. Don't make a mockery of this work. Don't abuse this work. Don't give it a bad name and a bad reputation by doing crazy, stupid things. That's like me giving you a gift and then you slapping me in the face. That's what that is like. So don't be that asshole. Respect this substance. Respect this work. Do it carefully. Do it with love and respect and consciousness. And understand that it's not just about you. It's also about the reputation and the image of psychedelics as a whole field. And also specifically 5 meal malt. That itself will have its own reputation. You see, and right now we're going to be building that reputation. What is that reputation going to be? That's going to depend upon you and how you act and how you behave with this substance. And if you act irresponsibly like a child, then don't be surprised when the rest of society cracks down, bans this stuff, or demonizes it because you're giving them a, a, a good reason to demonize it because you're using it like a devil. So understand the greater collective responsibility that you have. You don't just have a personal responsibility here to not harm yourself. Obviously, you have that responsibility. But you also have a responsibility to your family, to your friends, and to society at large to give this incredible, miraculous substance the right image and reputation. Because there are thousands and millions of people even who could be benefited by 5-MeO malt, but they never will be because you and others like you have abused this like devils. Use it to do stupid things like running around naked on the streets yelling like a madman. Or using it in other kinds of dangerous ways where you hurt, hurt, harm yourself or harm others. After a bunch of you have done that, then see what you've done, the worst thing you've done is that, it's not that you've hurt me, it's that you've hurt thousands and millions of other potential people who could have benefited from this substance who never will. People who are suffering with mental illnesses who could have been cured, people who are struggling with their spiritual work and practices, people who are stuck in their ego, people who are considering suicide, people who, who have PTSD and other sorts of dysfunctions who could have been cured and healed by this powerful, amazing, miraculous substance, but they never will be because of the devilish ways in which you've acted 
and now which has resulted in a stigma around this substance. So please take both personal and collective responsibility here. And this is how we move mankind forward. This is how we awaken the world.